What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Charles, owner of MX Revival and MXRevival.com and today I have a really fun video lined up for you. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to get an absolutely frozen and decrepit set of swing arm bearings out of a swing arm and furthermore, out of a bike when it's just absolutely frozen into the chassis and seems like you cannot get it out. And boy, let me tell you, it was an absolute fight getting these out of the bike, so I'm stoked to share that with you guys today. We're gonna cover several different ways, methods, and tools on how this can be done. Best of all, I'm gonna show you guys how to prevail and become victorious when it just seems like these are not gonna come out of your bike. You can get them out and you will be able to after this video. We're gonna use fire, air tools, a bunch of heavy duty stuff, and we're gonna make it happen. Huge thanks to All Balls for sponsoring today's video. Without their help, I would not have been able to get all this rusty garbage out of my bike and get it back on the track. So I appreciate you guys. All right, guys, welcome. It is time to get our hands dirty. We are going to remove this swing arm from this 89 RM250, get it pulled over here to the press. We're going to knock the bad bearings out of it, get some fresh bearings put in. I'm going to be using these all balls, part number 28-1045 on the old RM250 and actually using a lot of all balls products. Got all the master cylinder, rebuild kits, caliper rebuild kits, fork seals, dust seals, all the fork uh, guide bushings, really cool. I was pumped to know that I could actually get these parts new for such an old bike. There is more in here as well. I think I have some other bearings, but you get the point. Big stack of All Balls products. Thank you guys for having what I need. So having said all that, guys, it's time to get to work. If you're short on time, you're in a pinch, you can use the chapters in the video description below. I try to leave those there for you guys who just want me to get to the point, so to speak. That will be straight to the actual swing arm bearing job itself. Otherwise, for those of you who would like to stick around and see the entire procedure, we'll get started now. We're gonna start by pulling the back wheel off. We'll go ahead and use the all 16ths. We'll try and call out anything I see funny on this bike as we take it apart too, because if you saw the last video, which is also in the description below, it was my very first ride on this bike. Really, really excited. Such a cool machine. So now we're gonna go ahead and get it, you know, put it back together a little more safely so it can be ridden without worrying about what may or may not happen. This castle nut here did not have the cotter pin. A little rubber mallet action, get that axle out. By the way, you may or may not be able to tell that this uh, lift stand is absolutely saving my back. These are amazing. If you don't have one, you need one. Oh, we've got a little problem here. The disc and the caliper are sort of fused together. Looks like that's because this rotor is shot. There's a groove in it from the pads, so somebody probably ran the pads clean off of an old set and ran the steel backers into the rotor. So got to unpinch this guy, try and twist it sideways and get the piston to push back in. And that did the trick. What is going on here? There's like a, uh, this bolt, this adjuster, the head got snapped off. So somebody put, uh, this jam nut that is supposed to be there in conjunction with like a spacer to go ahead and push the axle back. So I'm gonna have to do something about that. It'll be fine until the chain stretches, but not long after that. Speaking of the chain, that's actually the real first step, guys. You're supposed to take the chain off first. Yay me. Anyways, it doesn't make too much of a difference. I'd like to get the master link on top here, the link that holds everything together. Put the bike in first gear so nothing can move. And I can keep a little bit of tension on here. Then I will take a flathead screwdriver and a mallet and give the master link a little love tap. And there she goes. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the brake caliper and just set it aside with some zip ties. You're not supposed to let these hang. I actually don't really know the real reason why. If any of you guys know why you're not supposed to let brake calipers hang on the line, aside from the fact that it might just stretch the line, please let me know in the comments below. A couple zip ties. I'm just gonna zip tie it up to this little foot peg holder here on the stand. Here's another reason I like this stand. I'm gonna spin the bike because I think you guys will be able to see what I'm doing better when I don't have the camera competing against the uh, incoming light from outside. Hopefully that's better for you. I think that it will be. I'm gonna pull this shock flap off. I want you guys to be able to see this crazy old school linkage a little better. Yeah, check this thing out. They don't build them like that anymore. Just such a crazy way, like this big, long center link. That's, that's pretty wild looking by today's standards. Missing a screw there on the guide, no big deal. So long as it isn't stripped, that would actually be really easy to tap, re-thread, get fixed. Next, I'm gonna loosen up this main pin nut. I like to use a bar on these. Sometimes these are corked really hardcore. Real easy. That one didn't really have any extra torque on it, so that's good. Did not need the bar, but a tip for you if you need it nonetheless. 
Got the nut out of there. Looks like somebody beat the ever-living hell out of it. There was no washer behind it. Oftentimes there is supposed to be a washer in there. I'll have a look at an OEM microfish to see if that's the case and buy one if I need it. But that's loose. Now we can get down here and crack some of the linkage. So the swing arm is going to be able to come out real easily with removing this uh, link arm bolt here in the linkage below and then the main pin uh, that goes through the engine. Then I'll be able to pull the whole thing out. 19 millimeter down here, which a lot of them still are to this day. Some of them are 17, but really common. Got some double wrench action going on under here. I've left that lower bolt in for now because it holds the bike together. Nothing's loose yet in terms of falling apart or a loose swing arm from that bolt coming out. I'll go ahead and do the top here. It's a 19 as well. If you guys need to extend your wrench, some of you may know the trick, some of you may not, take another box end wrench of a similar size, slip it onto wrench number one. Now you have a little extra leverage. This side of the bolt is captive. It's inside the cast. Looks like the chain did a number on that too, uh, but not totally destroyed. So I got my lever here. The only thing you wanna watch out for, sometimes the wrench will slip and you might hurt your wrist, but usually, yeah. Oh my God, that thing's stuck. We're gonna need the bar. That didn't work. Call in the old bar for backup. Nothing beats the bar. Nothing stands a chance. Undefeated. All right, so I'm about at the point where I can use the rubber mallet and tap these pins out. Hopefully they come loose easy. It looks like it's received some love in the past in terms of lubrication. Now you guys can see just how loose the sucker is. The swing arm is it's loose on both sides. Let's see if we can get a better shot of that. I don't know if you guys can see the clicking there between the blue frame and the swing arm. I know it's hard to capture super high detail with the GoPro. A little love tap. Oh boy, not moving. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this brake guide because something tells me if I break it, I'm not getting a new one right away. No problem, no strip threads, that's good. Let's see if the bottom one wants to come out. Yeah, that came out. Easy peasy. Let's check this thing out. Yeah, it's been greased. A long time ago, but it's been greased. A little bit of water in there from yesterday's bath. Now this guy here, we got a couple options before we have to bring out the big guns. As you can see, also, all this is loose. We got the link arm loose from all this other crazy old school stuff. And then we just have the swing arm main pin holding us in now. I can actually leave this alone, but I want to take it out so I can lubricate it. As you can see, it's already frozen or really seems frozen. And actually, you know what? That even could just be because all of this mess over here, these aluminum castings are kind of ground out into the steel pin. So that could be holding this up. Now this is somewhat of a common situation. Not the fact that the pin and the swing arm are kind of fused from the chain grinding it, but the fact that the bolt is a little stuck. Sometimes you just need a little more persuasion and I don't like doing this to bikes. It just doesn't feel good. But if you have to go ahead and put the nut back on, so you don't screw up the end of the bolt, therefore rendering it useless. I think if I give it some love taps, it's going to pop out of this fusion on this side. Like I said, I hate doing this. There's another option too, if this doesn't work. And it worked, and that was a really light tap, so cool. Lubricated, awesome. Pretty clean actually. And we get to reuse everything, no massive damage. Next up guys, I wouldn't have mind showing you, it's actually busting out the air hammer let's check that out real quick sometimes you really got to persuade stuff out and use one of these guys and i would have heated it up with a torch right here one of these guys a little fire and i would have just driven that thing out it happens next step to getting this thing all the rest of the way out without it falling on the ground mind you is i like to take the half inch drive extension i have and push this through oh that one's that one's, oh my, not good. Actually not surprised that that's seeming to be stuck because how worn the swing arm bearings are. Um, man, this could be a chore, so let's see. Oh, another quick tip. A lot of times on more modern bikes, you'll need to remove the brake pedal because it usually blocks this hole that the pin lives in. In this case, looks like it will clear the spring and the pedal on this old school bike. Maybe we're onto something with all that damage there. Maybe that's telling us a little story. We're gonna go ahead and try and persuade it again. We're gonna put the nut back on most of the way. Nut's already smashed to death. And you guys might see the old air hammer trick after all today. Extension, single jack. Oh, not good. No movement. No movement. Oh man. 
not a good situation at all. That feels absolutely terrible. Like fused, 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 really, really bad. So yeah, we're gonna play with the air hammer here. Man, I hate it when it comes to this. So it goes a little something like this. A little bit of air, a little bit of throwing stuff on the ground. We're also gonna need our buddy, the torch. And as bad as it is, you're gonna play with a little bit of fire and use your tools. Not such a bad day. All right, guys, so before we start applying heat to this bad boy, I need to go ahead and take things like the chain slider off. That would just melt, obviously. And then we're gonna wanna be really careful. Um, it's a bummer when you have to do this because there is a center case gasket in the back of the engine. Obviously, we don't want to nuke that thing, have the engine start to leak. We wanna be mindful of anything else that we could damage with the heat. And the goal is to get it hot enough to let the air hammer do the rest of the work without destroying anything else. And eventually we will get the pin out. Let's see if we can get that out of there without too much trouble. This sprocket is a 14. I did some research, turns out it's supposed to be a 13. So it is a little bit bigger. It's a little snug, but we got it done. All right, guys, time to make some racket. I'm gonna go ahead and also throw on some ear protection. These things are loud enough on their own. When you contact them on this pin or any kind of metal, they get even louder. They are insanely loud. So protect your ears. We're gonna try this without heat first, just in case we get lucky. We probably won't, but uh, as you can see, I've got the nut on here still. And when the nut bottoms out, I'll start to back it off more. See what happens. Nothing, no movement at all. So. We're gonna need some heat. Like I said, just take your time. Kind of watch out for areas you wouldn't want to burn up. As you can see, we moved the chain slider, and that's exactly where we need to throw some heat. I'll be doing the same thing on the other side. Now usually this takes several runs with the torch before this thing starts to move, but eventually it will start to move. You just got to keep working it. Nothing. Just keep throwing heat at it. It's going to start moving eventually. <laughs> Man, check that out. That is probably the worst swing arm play I've ever seen. Hopefully everything's okay in there. Still nothing. I've been heating this thing for about four or five minutes. Give it another love tap. Nothing. <laughs> so stuck. You can even throw a little heat through the pin itself, right down the center. You're just trying to attack this thing from every possible angle. All right, I've been beating on this thing for 20 minutes with heat and the big hammer and the extension and the air hammer, and we're starting to finally get some movement. It's so slow, you probably won't even be able to tell. You could hear the nut bottom out right there. So things are moving along. I've had to throw down on this thing so hard that the nut is actually stripped now that it's at the end of its threads. So having said that, we'll give it a little more persuasion. I heard it bottom out again. Then we'll go ahead and try and spin it out a little bit more. Oh man. There we go. Oh yeah. That sucker's backed. Time for a fresh one. I mean, it's, wow, it's like bald inside. You guys can't see it, but <laughs> it looks like chrome in there. Now, earlier when I was hoping I'd get away with the extension and some gentle love taps with the rubber mallet and not the freaking single jack, I was gonna show you a trick with this. We can still do that, but we're gonna go ahead and drive it out a little bit further with the air hammer still. Otherwise, I'm gonna be whacking away with the single jack for 10 more minutes. But you should be able to see this thing drive pretty well now. Still slow as molasses, but progress is being made. As you can see, the pin's coming out the other side. 
getting to the point now where I actually need to use the extension as an extension. Sucker is giving me a fight, boy. That thing is bone dry, rusted, and seized to the max. Forgot to mention to you guys, I'm also wearing eye protection. You just never know. I actually even had a piece of this extension chip off. Maybe you can or can't see that, but those things you're not expecting go flying across the room. They could hit you in the eye or whatever, so just be careful. We're pretty close to showing you the extension trick. Jeez. There she is. Sucker flew clean across the room. Let's see, don't touch it. It's hotter than hell. Yeah, that's totally stripped. Hopefully I can get another one of those. I mean, gee, that is crazy. Now you know what the extension's for. It keeps the swing arm from flying out and hitting the ground. It's even more important now that the thing is piping hot. So that's what I was trying to show you earlier. It works really great. And a great way to get it back out is now that it's probably been warmed up from sitting in these heated parts, just go ahead and use your ratchet or whatever. In my case, wow, that's the, I use this for driving pins out quite often. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's too deformed now <laughs> to accept the ratchet. So man, we lost a good one in this video. RIP to my extension. We'll just use this gigantic screwdriver to get it out. So that should be it. We are free. About time too. So it probably goes without saying now guys that I need to go ahead and push all these out, all these collars and just make sure everything is lubricated. Those actually look like they've been replaced or recently lubed, so that's good. But you got all these other linkage pivots. You got one at the mainframe, one at the shock, this one here that the link arm went up and attached to the swing arm. Hopefully those are all okay, but I'll go ahead and check those, take them apart, grease them, replace them if necessary before I put the swing arm back in. And if you guys want to watch a complete video on how to do that to your swing arm, linkage, steering, wheel bearings, all that stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a video link in the description below. I've got a full bike teardown on the 450, so maybe you'll enjoy that. If you haven't ever done it before, your bike does not come with grease from the factory. It is bone dry, believe it or not, and uh, these guys here, they've seen better days, and uh, they may be original. So we're gonna find out, still super hot, look how loose. Oh yeah, okay, so against the all balls sleeve, no hole in this, so that's really cool, you guys. Check this out. These have a, uh, a hole in them, so the grease can actually get through and into the bearings, or vice versa, out towards the sleeve, whatever it may be. Really cool. Let's see, we got some bearing bits in there. Oh man. Yeah, it's already, it's cooled off quite a bit. I can actually touch it. Look at that. A few corpses out of there. Time to get these out with the press. Oh, things are not looking good over here, guys. <laughs> what a disaster. Poor old bastards. It will be super nice to replace all this stuff. Nothing like brand new parts that work properly. Got some more deceased in here, a piece of metal from God knows what. Got the old seal. Man, what a disaster. So inside the swing arm, I'm seeing this portion of the all balls kit. That is on the inside here. And that's actually going to prohibit me from using the press. Uh, I usually put an extension through here and a socket and I would drive the bearing straight out. But this is ahead of the bearings and it has the same diameter here. So it's actually flushed up against the bearing that's going to disallow me from pressing this through this way. And the reason I need to do that is because if I stuck this in the press like so, started pressing down from the top, oh, I just made a huge mess of bearing bits. <laughs> Anyhow, if I were to press through the top, and the reason I need to press through the top is because I want this to be sitting on the press plate. You don't wanna press with this free hanging spar out in the air and then bend it, if that makes sense. So normally I would put an extension through here so I could actually reach. This bottom spar would be against the bottom press plate and then I would have either a cup here or something and I would drive the socket through, a socket that's the same size as the bearing to push the bearings out. But this guy's in the way so I think we're gonna have to actually use another tool as well in conjunction with the press and that would be a blind bearing puller. You guys are probably familiar with those. If you're not, it's kinda like a slide hammer 
uh, it is a slide hammer, excuse me, where you take one of these guys, would be sticking one of these collets inside of the piece we're trying to get out of the swing arm, the thing that's the color that's blocking the bearings, get the right size for that. We would go ahead and tighten that inside and that actually flares this open and it would capture or catch the back side of this. Then the slide hammer screws into the collet like so and then you can bang the piece out. You could do this with bearings also. Obviously I like to use the press because it's more controlled and it's like a second set of hands and it just does a nice slow well modulated job of getting bearings in and out but this guy is uh, is blocking me so we'll have to use the slide hammer or the um, slide bearing puller real quick. If nothing else you guys are getting to see some more tools. So first things first you want to get the right collet. As you can see there's you know a couple that get used the most and this looks like it would be it so if I can open this up and it catches the back side of that which it looks like it's going to this would be the one we're going to use so we also want to see if this even fits inside of here because the slide hammer is going to have to go through here so yeah we're good we can flare this open inside of that little collar and tap it out this way let's give that a shot all right so we're going to weasel this guy in there this is using a 21 millimeter wrench and a 19 millimeter wrench and we're just going to sort of tighten it into itself until it flares out enough to catch the back side of that collar there's a little lip on the back of this collet. That's actually what's going to catch the collar. Starting to catch now. You're going to pull it against the lip and then just tighten this thing until it's not crazy tight because what will happen is it'll actually expand so much that it's pressing the part into the walls of the swing arm or whatever it is you're trying to get the bearing out of. So you want it just hooked up enough uh, to where you can actually tap it out with the slide hammer and not create even more drag on yourself. So we're hooked up there. We're on the back of that thing. You can go ahead and throw the slide hammer through here and thread it into the collet. I'm gonna go ahead and put something soft under the swing arm because I don't want to damage or scratch the sides. It's in pretty dang good shape for its age. And with a little bit of love, this should pop right out, hopefully. Needs more love. And by love, I mean fire. There we go. And there it is. Be careful when you're unthreading this stuff, guys. Parts can be extremely hot. But as you can see, the blind bearing puller is an absolutely kick-ass tool. It'll get you out of a pinch in a lot of situations. Actually, let me show you something real quick where you actually have to use that. These linkages for uh, YZ300, Project Disruptor, they have a shoulder inside of the uh, link arm there. You can kind of see that lip inside. The bearing would bottom out on that and so you can't actually drive the bearings all the way through. You have to use the blind bearing puller. I will leave you guys a link to this tool down below as well. It comes in so handy and it lasts a really long time. There is, is it hot? There's the color that came out. Where's the new one? Yeah. So mm, nice fresh parts, digging that. So what's great is that now I can flip this over in the press find a socket that is the same width as the diameter of the bearing, and then be able to put the extension through here, drive it out. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you in a minute. All right, so we're about to hop on the press, but I wanna pre-clean this first. When it's this bad, guys, just hit it with a wire wheel. Get as much crap off as you can. Uh, it's really, really messy. There's a lot of rust, a lot of debris, <laughs> bearing bits. And what's really unfortunate about when they are this trashed is you can see the little loose pieces in there those skinny little pieces those are the ends of the bearing race that would normally hold the bearing pins captive and uh, that that's tough because this one here on the end is split open like it's separated the rust is so bad and it's been getting rolled into and pushed against with rust and rot uh, and just absolute dry for so long that the edges of the bearings break away and unfortunately that's what we need to use to put a socket against to press these out. So once that breaks away, you're basically left with a sleeve with no edges inside of these swing arm spars. Those are a nightmare to take out. That's just more time. You get the Dremel out. I've done it before. It's kind of looking like I might have to do that again uh, with this guy. Hopefully not. We're gonna use heat and just take our time and really try to get these out slow. Uh, Cause once these sidewalls bust, uh, it's, <laughs> it's not fun. So check this out guys, I've got the kit opened up and laid out here in front of us. These are absolutely awesome. They come with everything you need. It's got the bearings, which are 
actually caged on this model. You can see they are, they are held captive inside of a cage in there. That's nice because they won't fall out. Uh, when I press these in, I like to use the square side. There's a square side here and a round side. You have the seals for each end of uh, the swing arm ends. You have the sleeves that ride inside the bearings ultimately, which then the main pin rides through. And then you have the end caps for the swing arm itself. And this will just keep all the dirt and debris and water out. We'll end up being able to avoid a situation like the one we are in now that has us replacing this stuff in the first place. But every all balls kit I've used has always been like this. It's always been very inclusive, everything you need. An unintentional little thing that happens too is a, a lot of the parts come in these baggies. So just a perk, I save those for little parts later on. And like I said, OEM parts for this bike, not easy to come by. So really glad there's a solution for this and really, really glad we have that whole stack of all balls parts to take care of this bike because I was really worried for a while that I wasn't gonna be able to find anything for this bike. And I was so very wrong. I mean, shock, fork, linkage, steering, cables, carb rebuild kits. These guys have everything. So, all right guys, here we are in front of the press. This sucker is awesome. I just picked it up. I had a little bit smaller one before. Um, this bad boy. <laughs> you can basically press the bearings in, uh, actuating the jack with your hand. You don't even need the bar. A ton of pressure. So this is how this is gonna go down. I have this sleeve here and this is going to go on the bottom of the swing arm here. This will allow the bearing to be pushed out and not hit anything on its way out so it can just fall out of there and this is about the right length because as you can see the bearing is sort of a long one as well and we want to get it all the way out without any incident you can also see i have a socket here it's a socket that best fits in this hole you want to get it as tight as you can when you put it inside this hole even if it has a little bit of drag you'll just get a better contact on that outer lip or race of the bearing you're trying to press out. So the wider the better, if you can get something that fits in this hole perfectly, that's great. It doesn't have to be a socket. It could be, you know, a piece of steel that fits in there properly, whatever. This just so happens to be a 13 16. So we're gonna start by laying the sleeve down. Then the swing arm's gonna go on top of that. I like to use my leg over here to kind of hold this up and modulate it a little bit. And lastly, we are going to use whatever life is left in our, our buddy, the old extension that helped us get that swing arm pin out. And now, as you can see, I will be able to press everything straight out. The jack or the press is actually gonna contact the extension and so on and so forth. The last component is heat. I need to go get the torch. We want this to be freakishly hot for this job, just especially because the bearings or the races are so rusty and so bad, I don't even know if they're gonna come out. But uh, this setup here plus heat is going to give you the best chance at getting those out without breaking them because we do not want to bust out the Dremel, although we will if we have to, and it'll just be one more thing I get to show you. So let's get to it. So you start with your heat, get everything just absolutely piping hot. Once you're good and warmed up, you're gonna go ahead and rest your swing arm on that sleeve that I have down below, making sure that it is not blocking the bearing in any way because you don't want to force the bearing into the side of that, especially under the tremendous pressure of the press. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, say a little prayer. Hopefully this sucker comes out. All right, so we have contact. We are completely tight between the jack, the extension, socket, and sleeve. Let's go ahead and put the bar in the jack and uh, start praying. Oh, please come out. Please come out. Oh, it doesn't sound good. Does not sound good. You can work this with heat the entire time. No rush. All right. Oh, oh, we got movement. We got movement. It's not good movement, but it's movement. Sometimes too, with this being under pressure, you'll give it some heat and it'll just skip on its own. It'll kind of drop out as the aluminum expands around that steel race. Come on, baby. Don't make me bust out the Dremel, please. Oh yeah, moving a lot better. So you guys can see uh, the heat makes a huge difference. Now in a second, this swing arm is going to sort of drop and be free. The extension is gonna fall away from the jack. So it's a good time to have your hands on the swing arm and just kind of be ready for that. There we go. Did we get it out? Did we get it out? Let's see. We did. We got it. Hell yeah. Oh my God, that thing was hotter than hell. Let's check that old roach out. 
Yeah, I can't believe we got it. Man, that thing was so frail. You guys can see the missing edge. Just terrible. I'm so pumped we got that out. Heat is the key here. Heat is maybe the most important thing. See ya. All right, guys, it's time to do pretty much the exact same thing to the other side. If we could get another complete bearing race extraction without anything breaking, I would be so happy. Get a little tension on it, and then we're gonna throw some heat on it. All right, say a prayer. Oh, so far, so good. Way better than the other side. And yeah, I think we got it. I do not want to touch any of that. Oh yeah, we got it. That one, oh, equally as rough. Probably broken a little worse, but not on the press side. So guys, we got lucky, no Dremel. Man, the hard part is out of the way. The fight with the swing arm main pin and getting those bearing races out in one piece was a success. Now guys, it's time to clean these holes out with like a wire brush, something like this. You can get an assorted pack of these for dirt cheap at Harbor Freight. Just run this thing in and out of there until you get as much of the debris out as possible. Check it out guys, we've got nice clean bores. That's the perfect setup for brand new bearings to get pressed in. And you know what? All balls out of everything. They even sent a little coffin for all the old bearing bits and corpses. Oh man. Now you guys know we're about to press the new bearings in, but first we're gonna go ahead and hit these bores with your favorite waterproof grease that's really going to help ease these bearings in. Now we're all set to press in some freshies. All right, it's time. This is when the magic happens. So now that we have our bearings out, we don't actually need the sleeve I was using before, the one that was underneath that made room for the bearings to be pressed out. And this process is pretty much everything in reverse. And one thing I'm going to want to be mindful of, though it isn't that important because I'm going to show you a trick for it later, is these collars. So these collars, as you guys remember, we used the blind bearing puller to get the old ones out. They were on the inside of the swing arm. I would want to be sure to go ahead and press the new bearing deep enough so that when this is installed, it sits flush and it's right against the bearing and everything. But what I can also do is go ahead and install the bearing most of the way and let it slide into the swing arm just a little bit less than the depth of this lip here. And then I can go ahead and press this in on top of it and this will force the bearing down into its exact resting place. So everything will actually end up perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and get our socket and our extension and we are gonna go ahead and line the two up like so. I'm also using the flat side of the bearing. There are two sides, of course, one is very round and one is very flat. So I put the socket against the flat side just so this round side, which is effectively sort of tapered, can sort of weasel its way into the bore. And then the socket has a nice flat surface to press against as well. So we got our bearing lined up. We got our socket, we got our extension. We go ahead and put a little pressure on this. And with the bore grease, you guys can see, I'm not even using the bar. I'm just using my hand on the jack and it's pushing right in. So simple. Very nice, very easy, very clean in there now. Another thing you want to watch is to make sure that the socket isn't overlapping in such a way that it would contact the aluminum of the swing arm. This one's good enough. It's actually in a place that where once the socket contacts the swing arm, the swing arm hole will sort of just bump it over to the side a little bit like that. And now I have the bearing pressed in just a little bit past flush. We're going to go ahead and use this collar that gets installed right here to push the bearing in the rest of the way so that when this bottoms out, everything is exactly where it needs to be. So we'll take some pressure off this. We'll go ahead and sit this guy in there like so, and we can just use the same socket to get this job done. Too easy. Boom, we got a little bit of tension on there now. I know it's bottomed out. You do not want to overdo it. And that's that. We'll go ahead and flip it over, do the exact same thing on the other side. All right, guys, I made a little mistake and I want to make sure I show you there are four seals in this swing arm bearing kit, which is very normal for most bikes. But what isn't normal is this collar we just pressed in. This isn't normally something that goes into the swing arm. Normally something like this is in the back of the engine cases pressed into the engine. And so normally you'd be able to see these seals 
one on each side of the swing arm spars here. And so actually I do need to install these that way. One of these seals is gonna go in under this uh, collar that I just pressed in. So I need to take it back out. But I just realized that everything had been so rotted out, I couldn't even tell there was a seal in there before. And so I found it weird that there would be a seal between this collar and the bearing since this thing is flushed up against the bearing itself. But the parts microfish actually shows it in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and install everything properly on the side I haven't done yet. And then I'll go ahead and move on to fix the side I did just do. Anyways, I wanted you guys to see that because it was a little error. And since it only takes a minute, we'll go ahead and do the other side together as well real quick. So it's the same thing on this side, guys. You got the round side down, flat side up. But one problem you may encounter if you're using a deep socket like I am is this will no longer fit. Before I was able to pass it through the top here, but now there's actually a bearing in the way so you can get a shorter socket. Or you can go ahead and use anything that's flat and go ahead and press the extension into whatever flat piece you have here and it will do the same thing then once you get it deep enough you can go ahead and sub the socket back in and because i think it's funny i'm just going to use a wrench just a swing arm bearing after all nothing too critical as you can see the wrench is doing a fine job of becoming a flat plate now it's probably deep enough we can go ahead and sub the socket back in plenty of room now our extension will fit through as well and we're good to go so now on this set i'm going to do the exact same thing except of course i need to remember to put one of those seals in there and if i'm not mistaken these seals do have a metal band inside the edge that is coated in this rubber here and so i'm going to go ahead and use the collar same way to press everything down get the bearing where we want it and i don't really have any fear of this collapsing due to the fact that there is a metal band under this rubber here. Go ahead and drop that seal in there. Go ahead and grab our collar, socket, extension, and just press to your heart's content. There, we're bottomed out, we're done. So on the side that I've now done properly with the seal, we'll go ahead and do the seal on the opposite side. Falls right into place, no problem. We're gonna need to go ahead and grease everything up with some fresh waterproof grease, but just to show you the order of operations, we have the large collars, then we have the short collars in the back, and once the short collar's in, that will flush up the long collar in the front there. And then this kit comes with some super nice seals. These are gonna go against the engine. These clip right in over the top of the short collar. So guys, check this out. You may remember we used the blind bearing tool to pull this original collar out, the bad one from this swing arm. But since we've done every other method of bearing removal and pressing imaginable, we've used the air hammer, we've used the press, we've used the blind bearing puller. Here's another tip for you, another way to remove bearings that doesn't include the press. And because I'm being lazy and I wanna go ahead and fix this side that I screwed up really fast, the side I didn't put the seal in, you can go ahead and take your socket, put it in against the bearing on the other side, and get your trusty air hammer. And out comes the collar. Now I can go ahead and put the seal in, throw this thing back in the press, done deal. So let's go ahead and do it the right way on this side, shall we? Got the bearing pushed down, got the seal put in like it's supposed to be, got my collar in, got my socket, my extension, and presto. All better. So guys, wrapping this video up, last thing to do, get your favorite waterproof grease. Go ahead, start damming it and rubbing it and pushing it and spinning it into these new bearings. We wanna get as much packed in there as we can. I'll push down and spin the bearing. We'll go ahead and lube up the collars as well. All of these little items that slide inside of the bearing. Again, long one goes in the front. Go ahead and grease up the lips of these caps. That'll help keep the water out for a little while longer when you're doing your washes or ride in creeks or whatever it may be. Lube up the short collar. Go ahead and slap the cap onto it. And you can put that thing into your swing arm. Other side, same exact thing. Get as much grease in there as you possibly can. Lube your collars, install your collars. And that is it. Guys, you are done. Unfortunately, guys, we're not gonna be able to reinstall the swing arm because this thing is cooked. I need to find a new one. It's also now very stripped. I think it must have been previously damaged. When I started this job, the nut had its brains absolutely bashed into oblivion and uh, I didn't really help. I just finished it off. So I'll see if I can find one of those new OEM. If not, it's gonna be eBay to the rescue. Otherwise, all balls, guys, thank you for having what I needed. That kit is awesome. Having said all that, I hope you enjoyed this video. You guys watched me struggle. You watched me sweat. You watched me almost break my hand with a single jack. You learned how to use a blind bearing puller, a bearing press, 
and an air hammer, but all those tips and tricks can be applied pretty much universally across all swing arm and linkage bearings. So I hope you enjoyed them. And guys, thank you so much for watching. That's a wrap on today's bearing job. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had a blast filming it for you. I didn't realize at first I was gonna get into that many tools. I usually just have the torch and the press, so I'm glad I got to show you other methods of getting bearings in and out. Now, as for the swing arm main pin, the one that is totally stripped that you saw in the video, I did a little research, and thankfully, I found out I can get these brand new, which means you can as well. Rocky Mountain has these brand new for about 60 bucks. You can also hop on eBay. They're even cheaper, about 30 bucks, but they won't be brand new. And one of the coolest things I realized the reason you can still get this is because it's shared all the way up to the end of the RM250's lineup, 2008. So when I hopped into Rocky Mountain's parts microfish, I cross-referenced the part number from the 89 and I just kept working the years up. And it turns out because I own an 06 and an 04 RM250 and the 04 engine is currently getting transplanted into a 250 AF, I actually had one of these pins left over. So thankfully, I already had one. See, it always pays to have more bikes lying around. Next video on the 1989 RM will probably be fork seal replacement, again, using some of the awesome All Balls products I have here. So I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to check out more MX Revival how-tos, tips and tricks in this playlist right here. Also, don't forget to check out all the links and important references I've left for you in the video description below. So guys, until next time, thank you for watching. Watching. I appreciate you, shred safe, and I'll talk to you soon.